Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to ask you a quick question. How many ways can you think of that destroy homes every year? Surely, earthquakes, floods, fires, all the elements of nature and acts of God are first to come to mind. Then you have things like insects, such as termites, and woodpeckers that do damage to the home in their own respects. Lastly, things like burglars breaking in and arsonists also make that list. However, America seems to be blind to the number one home wrecking force out there. Before I reveal that to you though, allow me to paint a quick picture. It's summertime, the weather is much like it is right now. Warm, the day is getting hotter as the day goes by. The children outside running around and around at the point of exhaustion. Mom and Dad know where to be found. Maybe they're down the road at a neighbor's house or shopping and getting groceries. Well, after a while, the kids become very tired and decide to go in, you know, rest, watch some good old television. Well, shortly they become very, very thirsty and there's no one around to get them anything to drink. Surely they can't go in the kitchen without their parents' permission. So whom can they call upon? This is where it begins, with the simple uttering of only three words, Hey, Kool-Aid man! <laughs> Upon speaking those words, before anything can be done to prevent it, the Kool-Aid man comes crashing through the wall, shouting his popular phrase, Oh yeah! Since 1975, the Kool-Aid man has been destroying homes all across America, and little of any effort has been done to stop him. Unfortunately, for those affected, there is no aid for them. Insurance companies won't cover Kool-Aid man related damages because the kids brought this on upon themselves. <laughs> Depending upon how old your house is and where it's located, you may also be in trouble. For the simple act of the Kool-Aid man breaking down but one wall can bring the whole foundation to the ground. Now, studies of the children involved in these incidents clearly aren't traumatized by it at all. Many have been quoted as saying, at first when the wall broke, I was really scared. But once I saw the Kool-Aid man, I knew it would be alright because he'd give me some Kool-Aid to drink and I wouldn't be thirsty anymore. However, parents are on the opposite side of the fence. They despise him because they know that if the Kool-Aid man strikes at their home, they may not be able to afford the repair costs and they may ultimately wind up homeless and on the streets. Religious groups are also furious with him as well because the children are idolizing him like a false god, filling their immediate needs of thirst, kind of like Satan. So, they're kind of mad about this, because the Kool-Aid man is influencing their beliefs. And the children are praising him and summoning him from the beyond, and then drinking his fruity blood in a ritualistic fashion. Now, in the past few years, the CIA and FBI have both teamed up with local law enforcement to try to track where the Kool-Aid man last struck and where he was likely to strike again. However, their efforts are in vain, because, as only children know, the Kool-Aid man appears when you summon him unlike Santa Claus or the Easter Bunny, who have set dates and times when they will arrive at your house. Also, they don't destroy your house. <clears throat> Perhaps the most confusing thing of all this is how a glass bowl of fruit punch can break through a brick wall and not crack or shatter. Even more odd is that the Kool-Aid man seems to show no remorse whatsoever for his actions. He simply breaks through your wall, shouts, oh yeah, gives you something to drink, and leaves. As Dean Cook said, you know, Kool-Aid man, chilling out, relaxing, comes bursting through your wall, screaming, oh yeah, breaks your coffee table, asbestos and debris has fallen into his dumb open head. What do the kids do? They run up to him and drink out of his dumb open head in which asbestos and debris have fallen into it. Now, I'm freaking out because my dad's going to come home very soon, and he's not going to believe a bullet fruit punch came crashing through the wall, screamed, oh yeah. So I look at the Kool-Aid man, and I tell him, hey, you better fix this damn wall, because my dad's going to come home, and he's going to beat me with a toaster. <laughs> All the Kool-Aid man had to say in response was, oh yeah, more like, oh no, Kool-Aid man, oh no, that should be your phrase, as in, oh no, what have I done to this beautiful home? So please, I urge all of you, the next time you're very thirsty, do not say, hey, Kool-Aid man, but rather, more Ovaltine, please. <laughs>